Welcome in to your Wednesday edition of Bet. I'm your host, Anita Marks, and we are locked and loaded for this afternoon. Todd Luganville joins us to talk about the XFL as they are embarking into playoff territory. It all starts on Saturday, and of course, we've got another game on Sunday. Eric Moody joins us on Bet. we got to talk NBA. We already know the Suns and the Nuggets. They've advanced to the second round. Who else can we expect? And Rich Samini joins us finally. We've had him on so many times uh, in the past asking him, is Aaron Rodgers ever going to happen? Sure enough, it happened. There was a press conference today. Rich Samini got some questions in. So uh, excited to have him here on Bet. So uh, let's start with Tom. Tom, XFL, regular season's over. Now it's time for the playoffs. Saturday, the XFL. Arlington going up against Houston. Houston is favored by six. The total here is 41. Interesting, these two teams just met last Sunday. Houston won 25 to nine. Do you think we'll see the similar outcome this Saturday? I actually do. Now, I, I like the number. I like Houston favored here, but I would take the under. Because, you know, for all of Arlington's faults on offense, and they have struggled to continually move the ball, be productive in the red area, and score a significant amount of points, the defense has been outstanding. They've hung in there for 10 straight weeks while they've had an anemic offense that hasn't been able to help them out. So I'm counting on that defense for Arlington to keep this game close. But I just think that Houston has too much firepower. Houston beat Arlington last week with a lot of reserves on the field. That did not bode well for me. I didn't like the feel I got from Arlington. I like Houston in this matchup, but I think I'd take the under. I hear you. You know, Houston is, is and you know this better than I do, uh, has had a very interesting season, right? I'm going to lay the points with Houston. They started off strong 4-0. In the middle of the season is when they lost those three games. And I'm a really big believer. I like looking at teams that finish strong. And sure enough, they've won three straight. They've got Wade Phillips, one of the best yep. coaches in the XFL. Silvers has been improving at the quarterback position for Houston and the Renegades. As you said, I just I just I've been waiting all season long for them to kind of get it going, and I feel like they never have. So I am going to lay the six with Houston. Now uh, we've got a game on Sunday. Some would say the best team in the NX in the XFL, and that is DC. They're hosting Seattle. Three point favorite. The total is 48 and a half. Now, DC swept this season series against Seattle by a combined five points. Not a lot. Um, so, what do you like in this matchup? What side are you on? I, I like the over. I do believe that DC is favorite here because they are playing at home. Outside of St. Louis, it's the most difficult environment to play. The best, maybe, fan base in the XFL. You're playing in an MLS stadium. The crowd's right on top of you. But here's the thing that's interesting. I think Seattle is hot. And if you look at Seattle's season, their three losses came down to three plays. They fumbled on the one-yard line in the opener against D.C. That ended the game. They lost on a field goal um, at, at, the, at the last second against D.C. at home in Seattle. I think Seattle might be due, and they're playing really good football. They're going to have to go into a hostile environment. The over, for me, definitely in play. I would take that, but I actually would take the upset right here. I, I believe that it might be Seattle's turn. They're playing really good football. They've got a wealth of talent at wide receiver, and Ben DiNucci, while he may make mistakes, all right, his spectacular plays are truly spectacular. And I think he's going to pull a rabbit out of the hat 
uh, this weekend in, in a potential upset uh, on the road at D.C. Tom, lockstep, buddy. Absolutely. I love Seattle. Give me the points. I'm with you. I like the over as well. Seattle's won seven of eight. Again, I, look, I like to look at teams that are coming into the postseason hot and playing well. They lost to D.C., but they only lost to D.C. by one. So maybe this is the game, yep. revenge, redemption. Maybe they win outright. I wouldn't be surprised. As you said, they've got a lot, a lot of firepower, not just in the wide receiving core, but uh, Danucci playing well, running back position. And D.C. defensively, they've given up a lot of points and a lot of passing yards uh, the last few games. Yep. So I'm with you. I like Seattle here getting the points, and I do like the over. So uh, two fun games for the first round of the playoffs for the XFL. Tom, thank you so much for joining us. Really do appreciate it. Have a great weekend. You bet. Same to you. Fantastic. So we go from the XFL to the NBA. So Eric Moody joins us on the program. And Eric, a lot to dive into. Let's start first and foremost. Let's talk about the Hawks and the Celtics. Uh, who would have thought? Uh, that the series would still be going on. Not me. In fact, my best bet on Daily Wager last Friday was that the Celtics were going to sweep. So uh, let's, uh, <laughs> that was really perturbing. Uh, did, not that it ruined my weekend, but nonetheless, um, now we're looking at a game six. Hawks at home, a home dog, five and a half points. The total is 232 and a half. What are your initial thoughts on this line with a Trey Young Atlanta team going back home? I do like the Celtics in this matchup, so I like them to cover the spread. Also like the over in this game, and here's why. Now, you mentioned Trey Young, like what he was able to do in this last game. I'm like, the Hawks were down by 10 going into the fourth quarter, and he just really willed them to a victory. One thing about Young, I'm like, he made history because he's, he's the seventh different player to have at least 35 points and at least 10 assists in, um, in consecutive playoff games, so he was phenomenal. But the Celtics, it just pains me because they really missed out on a great opportunity here to close out the series. So I am very confident that Boston will take care of business on the road. One thing that's really intriguing, Anita, is that the last two victories in this series have come from the road team. So I think the Celtics will look to get off to a fast start uh, in this game. And they're going to score a ton of points, which really bodes well for them because Boston is actually 30-10-2 against the spread scoring more than 118 points. So again, I like the Celtics here to cover and I also like the over as well. Well, interesting because uh, let's let's uh, let's look at the series. There are big favorites in this series, right? So you can still bet six or seven games. Celtics to win the series 4-2 in six games, of course, is minus 230. Celtics to win in seven is plus 165. So uh, obviously hearing what you're saying, you're, you're more towards you think the Celtics are going to seal the deal uh, in game six? Yes, that, that, that would be correct. I do expect the Celtics to close this thing out. And um, again, they're going to come ready to play. They're going to get off to a fast start. I think they're going to blow the doors off the Hawks. And, you know, to be candid, Anita, I think, I think the Celtics are going to do a couple of things. For one, I think they're going to prioritize shutting down Trey Young in this game after the last two games with how he's performed. He's really hurt the Celtics offensively uh, in this series. And I think they'll do that. So they'll prioritize defense. Also, I see Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown having monster games. And when I say monster games, I'm expecting like 50 or more points and like 20 or more rebounds between those two players. And last but not least, I think the Celtics are going to have a commanding lead in this game and not have a repeat of the previous one and close this series out. So I would bet on them to close it out for two. All right, let's take a look at what's going on with the Nuggets and the Suns. As we know, they both won their series, so now they are the two teams that have first now advanced uh, in the West in the second round. But let's talk about the team, right? Because big picture here in regard to load management, um, you had Chris Paul played 59, game, 59 games, Booker played 53 games, AD played 47 games. So that's all fine and dandy. But when you look at this series that the Suns are coming off of, KD and Booker average about 43 to 44 minutes. Uh, CP3, just a little shy under that. So these heavy minutes, how do you think that's going to factor in with these three going up against arguably the best team in the West? Yeah, it, it's, it's definitely going to be a lot to unpack in this series, Anita. So a couple of things. I'm like, it really does make me nervous. 
you know, like one observation I had from the Clippers and Suns series was that the Clippers bench outplayed the Suns bench in this series. Every single game, I'm like, they got outplayed. And so that ultimately led to Kevin Durant uh, and Devin Booker. They ranked first and second in postseason minutes. And so you look at Monty Williams, he does not trust any rotations with the, without uh, at least like two starters in the lineup and on the floor. And so the Suns, you know, I hate to say it, but I feel like they're playing chicken. You know how the saying goes, you play chicken long enough, you fry. But, you know, I do have some concerns there. But as far as the series, uh, I think the series ultimately end up going seven games. I'm like, the Nuggets are very talented. I think their biggest strength in this series, which kind of counters what I just mentioned about the Phoenix, is that they have a really, really deep bench. And I think that can make a difference in this game. I'm looking at it like a heavyweight prize fight. Um, they're going to be slinging and hitting each other back and forth. But ultimately, I think the Suns will end up coming out on top in game seven. So that's kind of where I'm leading here. Yeah, I have to tell you, Eric, our producer Weimer and, and, and myself, we, we've never heard that phrase before. So not, you, you lost us there. But let's continue to talk about this series because the Suns, a small favorite to win the series at minus 130. The Nuggets, plus 110. No respect, I tell you. No respect for the Nuggets here. I'm on the Nuggets side, right? Like, we just talked about all the minutes uh, that Booker and Katie have been playing. And Booker, he's had to put up 40 points, if not more, to try to get past the Clippers, who didn't have Paul George, and Kawhi didn't play towards the end. The Denver Nuggets, they won the West. They arguably have the best player in the NBA in Jokic. Great supporting cast. Murray's averaging 35 points a game. Porter Jr., Gordon, they're healthy. They finally have this killer instinct. And so I've got Denver not only winning this series, I've got them representing the West. I've got them winning the NBA championship. And I got Jokic winning the MVP. Again, I just don't understand the disrespect <laughs> that's coming in for this Denver team. With that being said, let's take a look at some of the top odds here uh, in regard to the outcome and what you think the Nuggets could win. And, and, you know, obviously, I think a lot of money is going to be wagered on this series, one of the best I think we can anticipate in round two. But uh, take a look at this, this, this graphic, E, right? Winning the series in four, five, six, seven. So, uh, you know, obviously, you, sh you showed your hands here a little bit. You're leaning towards the Suns. But what would you wager here? Yeah, looking at this, it's like I'm still leaning towards uh, Phoenix winning it 4-3. Uh, again, they're, they're just a more talented team. Like, I know we talked about the Joker. We know what he brings to the table. I love the bench and the depth that the Nuggets have. But, again, this is a Phoenix team that has Kevin Durant, Devin Booker. They've got DeAndre Ayton, and they've got Chris Paul. Assuming that group stays healthy, they're going to get all the menace that they can handle considering the Suns situation. I think it's going to be very difficult for the Nuggets to beat this team. But again, I do think it'll be like a pendulum going back and forth. So I would bet on a 4-3 finish with Phoenix coming out on top. All right, Eric, sit tight. We're going to come right back to you and talk some NFL because now the man of the hour. No, it's not Aaron Rodgers, but it is Rich Samini joining us, who does a phenomenal job covering the Jets for ESPN. Rich, got to give you a lot of credit, right? You've been on with us twice before, and each time I ask you, how confident are you that this Aaron Rodgers deal is going to get done? And both times you said, Anita, 99%. I'm confident. And sure enough, Monday, the deal gets done. Let's start with the deal. How long does this keep Aaron Rodgers in a green jersey, a, a Jets green jersey? Jets green jersey. Uh, yeah, so uh, today we asked him that question in the formal press conference, and he was really noncommittal about that, did not want to go beyond this year. But then later, in a small group of reporters, we rephrased the question to him, and he said, look, he goes, I don't see this as a one-and-done deal. He recognizes the Jets gave up a lot of draft capital to get him here, and so he, he strongly hinted that he's going to be back for a second season. He says he just wants to live in the moment. Uh, he said uh, he'll let the season play out. He doesn't want to give a yes until he can give a full yes. And so, from all indications, it'll be at least two years of Aaron Rodgers. Now, again, we've had several conversations, uh, all of us here in New York on Aaron Watch, 
and there was a possibility that maybe this trade would not have gotten down gone down until like the night of the draft or maybe even the second round but of course it was finalized it got done on monday and here we are how much do you feel that the fact that the draft is coming and both these teams want to prepare properly affected this deal getting done on monday rich yeah yeah absolutely nita i mean the draft look we talked about it going up to the draft that was the absolute you know 11th hour basically I think both teams wanted to know what they have going into the draft to do some last minute prep work so this got done on Monday afternoon you know a huge deal probably a little more than I thought the Jets are giving up than I thought they would but uh, yeah they, they wanted to get this done they just there's a lot of things that have to go into it I mean Aaron Rodgers had he signed a restructured contract with the Packers and then got traded to the Jets and now as of a couple of hours ago, they were still trying to restructure his contract with the Jets just to provide some cap relief. So there's a lot of stuff that goes on with just the trading of a player of this magnitude. And so it's probably a good idea that they got it done earlier in the week. All right, well, let's talk about some of the numbers. As we know, Aaron Rodgers, he's 39. He's going to be 40 in December. Um, not that young spry 30 year old that we've been watching play in Green Bay, but nonetheless, nine and a half is the win total. Also, um, minus 150, the Jets to make the playoffs. The Jets haven't won uh, 10 games since 2015. So, uh, does this right. feel a little lofty to you? What are your expectations here? Well, I can tell you what Aaron Rodgers said today. He's he's absolutely thinking Super Bowl. He said going into the year, typically there are only about eight to 12 teams that have a legitimate chance of making the Super Bowl. And he believes this Jets team is one of those eight to 12 teams. Uh, look, they won seven games last year with arguably the worst or one of the worst quarterback performances in the league. You bring in an Aaron Rodgers, all of a sudden, you're talking maybe three or four wins additionally just from his play. Even if he doesn't play like the MVP Aaron Rodgers, even if he just plays above average, this team should win at least double digits as far as I can see because they do have a good defense and they do have some good weapons around Aaron Rodgers. So his passing prop, Rich, is over 4,000 yards, a number that he did not surpass last year. Uh, but he did the previous four years before that. Do you think that number is achievable for Aaron in this Jets offense this season? You know something, Anita? That is the magic number in, in Jet history. That only one quarterback in Jet history has hit 4,000 yards. That was Joe Namath in 1967. He, he actually was the first player in NFL history to hit 4,000 since then. No one has hit the 4,000 mark, which is actually fairly commonplace in the NFL. Now, usually there's a handful of guys who do it every year. I do think there is a good chance that uh, that he could go over that. Now, they're not going to be an air raid attack throwing on every down. They hired an offensive coordinator, in Nathaniel Hackett, who believes in the running game. So I do think they want to be balanced on offense. But if Aaron Rodgers is healthy for all 17 games, and his weapons are healthy. I think you're going to have some big plays on offense. So I do think there's a good chance he can hit 4,000. It will be interesting. Uh, as you can see, I'm wearing my Aaron Rodgers shirt. I'm going to be sure to take it off after the show because I'm heading out to a local watering hole here in my neighborhood. And there is some speculation that he might be my neighbor, Rich. How embarrassing. Que pena if he sees me walking around Hoboken with his face on my shirt. So. Uh, Rich, we so appreciate you joining us here on Bet, my friend. Thank you so much. You have a great night. Thanks, Anita. Anytime. You got it. All right, let's bring back Eric Moody. Let's talk about the Jets, and let's look at some of the future bets out there pertaining to this team, right? To make the playoffs, again, I just discussed it with Rich Samini, right? Yes, minus 150, no, plus 125. The win total is over under nine and a half. To win the AFC East is at plus money. The Bills are still favored there. Um, C7-1, the Super Bowl 14-1. to one. And then here, let's take a look at some of Aaron Rodgers' prop bets as well. As I mentioned to uh, Rich, over 4,000 passing, over under 20 and a half touchdowns, MVP. Some juicy odds there. So taking a look at, at the plethora 
of futures bets we can wager pertaining to Aaron Rodgers now being the starter, <laughs> starting quarterback in the Jets. Uh, what tickles your fancy? E? You know what, Anita? It's a lot on the menu that does tickle my fancy. But I'll, I'll tell you, I'm just glad that the uh, that the experience is over, that it's official. He is signed, traded with the Jets. They were good to go. He's going to be on the center because it was uh, – I think it was ongoing longer than like the Titanic movie from you know years ago. But anyway, I digress. So talking about A Rod here in 2023. So I think he's going to have a massive impact uh, on this Jets team. I'm like, you look at the playmakers that he's surrounded with. You know, Brees Hall. You got Michael Carter there. You got Garrett Wilson. I'm like, you've got his old buddy Alan Lazard. You got Tyler Conklin. And so yeah, I think this passing game is going to be humming. But when you look at the balance, I'm like, they got the running backs to really uh, leverage the running game as well. But he's got a very stout defense as well. You look at that Jets defense, they exceeded expectations last year. And uh, they finished, I believe, fifth in a uh, defensive efficiency. So when I look at this Jets team as a whole, and I really like their schedule too, Anita. They don't have too many East Coast to West Coast strips on there, uh, which, which is good. Although Aaron Rodgers will be playing in a much tougher division, from Josh Allen to uh, you know, the Patriots are there. But I, I think he'll be able to hang, you know, with the roster. So looking at some of these futures, you know, I, I like the Jets to uh, surpass the win total to nine and a half. I look at this team from top to bottom. I see a ten or eleven win team. Uh, so I do like that one quite a bit. Uh, obviously, for them to make the playoffs, because looking at this coaching staff, it's really playoffs or bust. You've got Aaron Rodgers. You've got the supporting cast. So you've got to make the postseason. So those are ones that catch my eye. That catch my eye. Excuse me. I also like, if you're looking at some of the player props, you know, I really like that one on passing yards and passing touchdowns. Also MVP, just because he's a quarterback and he's won the award multiple times before. But I'm not really concerned about his numbers from last year. If he's healthy going into the season, everybody knows what Aaron Rodgers is capable of. He's got the playmakers to surpass that number, you know, touchdowns and passing yards. So I think he's in good shape here. Yeah, again, looking at the passing yards, over 4,000 plus some change. Um, touchdowns over, over under 28 and a half. And again, some really good odds to win the MVP. Here's my thing. I, I, I personally, I, I think that the Jets gave up way too much for Aaron Rodgers. At 40 years old, not knowing if he's going to come back and play again another season. But also, him being older, he doesn't scrape. He's not creating space for himself like he did a few years ago. Ranked 30th in EPA even in a clean pocket, Eric. And, and now this is a Jets team. They traded uh, their first round pick to move down now to 15 from 13. They really need some offensive line help. I think they're really hoping that Broderick Jones, one of the legit offensive tackles, will still be available for them. I'm sure they're hoping that's going to happen because they need some offensive line help for Aaron Rodgers. Mm -hmm. On top of that, Listen, uh, there's there's a ton of weapons here, right? Garrett Wilson, they bring in Lazard, Brees Hall. He's coming off of ACL now. Hopefully, he'll be ready to go, I don't know, maybe the first four, five, six weeks of the season. You know what you get from the defense. So I, I do believe that exactly. this is going to be a very good Jets team, proved Jets team with Aaron Rodgers there. But I still believe that the Buffalo Bills are yeah. the king of the castle in the AFC East. So I've got the Bills winning the AFC East. I still have the Jets making it into the postseason. I do like the win total going <laughs> over nine and a half, even though their schedule is, is, is pretty difficult. They're going up against the NFC East and the AFC West, two very competitive good divisions that they're gonna, the teams that they're going to be facing in those divisions this season. But with Aaron Rodgers, how well this defense played last year, I do like them, again, to win over nine and a half games. And, and I do like for them to make it into the playoffs as a wild card. Any final thoughts, Eric, before we let you go? Yeah, I, I do have one final thought, talk, you know, talking about the Rodgers situation. One thing that we haven't talked about, but really it's impossible to quantify, is really the, uh, the motivation factor. Like he's with the team that he wants to play with. We all know the parallels in his career with uh, Brett Favre. But we know how Brett Favre's tenure with the Jets turned out. And so I think that'll be some additional motivation for Aaron Rodgers to kind of trump far in this regard once again. So I think he's aligned for a monster season. He's really going to help this team. That's all I wanted to add. Fantastic. Uh, so again, let's take a look at that, that Aaron Rodgers, uh, those future opportunities there in regards to what you could wager on. Over 4,025 and a half yards, 28 and a half passing touchdowns, and for him to win the MVP 18 to 1. 
Eric, thank you so much. Really do appreciate your time, my friend. Uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. Enjoy the plethora of games on the NBA slate tonight. Uh, as always, we like to end bet with before I let you go. And we're going to end it with a little links, a little golf. The Mexico Open tees off tomorrow morning. Who do I like? John Rahm. I know. No surprise there. I am going chalk. Why? This is a very long course. 7,500 yards, a par 71. Guys who win on this track, and granted, small sample size. This tournament hasn't been hosted here for very long. Grip it and rip it, right? The top 12 who finished back in 2022 uh, were in the top 12 in strokes gained off the tee, in the field off the tee. One thing that we know about John Rahm, he checks those boxes, right? Confidence after his Masters win, defending champion here at this event. Um, top in regards to strokes gained off the charts in long and straight drives. Uh, top five on the field in putting approach as well the last six months. So, and this isn't a great field. So it's not like there's uber competition that John Rahm is gonna be going up against. So first and foremost, I like John Rahm for the win. Number two, Keep an eye on Woodland, Gary Woodland, to finish in the top 10. Uh, one of only two players, by the way, um, who are in the field that sit above John Rahm in regard to strokes gained off the tee. Also, he's made four cuts in a row, and he finished top five, top 15 at Augusta, at the Masters. So Woodland is having a good season. So I'd like him to finish in the top 10. And last but not least, Jager, I'd like him to finish uh, in the top 20, and you could get some good odds there. His long game has been on point as well. Good recent form. Four cuts he's made in his last five times he's teed it up. He finished 15th at the Honda and 30th at the Valspar. So he's coming in with some really good form. So those are my par three, my favorite par three plays heading into the Mexico Open. So... Everybody, I want to thank you so much for tuning into Bet tonight. We've got you locked and loaded for the XFL playoffs coming your way on Saturday and Sunday. Uh, a ton of NBA action and futures bets, uh, as well as what to do with Aaron Rodgers here in New York. Everybody have a fantastic night. Enjoy the NBA games.